Thousands rallied in the Syrian capital of Damascus in support of President Bashar al-Assad. They are protesting new economic sanctions imposed by the Arab League. In Damascus, tens of thousands took to the streets to protest new economic sanctions imposed by the Arab League. Demonstrators waved flags and held portraits of President Bashar al-Assad at the state-backed rally. The show of support for the president broadcast on Syrian TV comes ahead of more sanctions that will likely isolate Assad. The country's economy is already reeling from sanctions imposed by the U.S. and the European Union. Syrian Foreign Minister Walid Wallam. Brothers, to stop dealing with the central bank is a declaration of economic war and international law. This is an unprecedented move. Freezing the Syrian assets? Let me assure you, 95 or 96 percent of it has already been withdrawn. Meanwhile, anti-government sentiment in Homs appears to be greater than ever in these videos uploaded to a social media website. This, as a UN Commission report, charges the government with committing crimes against humanity, including murder, torture, and rape. Anti-U.S. sentiment is on the rise following a deadly NATO attack on two Pakistani military outposts. Pakistani protesters retaliated by blocking an important supply route into Afghanistan. Outrage over a NATO attack that killed 24 soldiers spills onto Pakistan's streets. Death to America, these men chant at a protest in the capital. The lethal airstrike on two military outposts near the Afghanistan border at the weekend heightened anti-American sentiment and is testing diplomatic relations between Islamabad and Washington. Pakistan has retaliated by blocking a crucial supply line into Afghanistan. Despite the prospect of losing their jobs, truck drivers along a now-closed NATO supply route support the anti-American sentiment. We have shut it down because America and Afghanistan are tyrannizing Pakistan. I will sacrifice my wealth, health and even my life for Pakistan and its army. Speaking in London, American General Martin Dempsey understood the Pakistan anger. I mean, it's really tragic. You know, we've, we've been working hard to, um, you know, to better understand each other and to have the kind of discourse among partner nations and this just is a very challenging issue for both sides but nothing to apologize for no i don't i i don't know uh, enough about the incident he said the u.s would channel supplies into afghanistan through other routes both nato and the u.s are conducting separate investigations into the devastating air attacks <laughs> Hundreds of people marched inside a city chanting anti-U.S. slogans and denouncing what they called Washington's risky interference in the region. A number of politicians were among the protesters to show their support for the protesters, condemning the visit of the U.S. Vice President Joe Biden to Iraq. During his visit, the U.S. Vice President Joe Biden held talks with the Iraqi top officials, including the Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki. The Iraqi lawmakers, clerics, city councillors, and tribal leaders also united their voice, urging the Iraqi government to end the presence of the occupiers in their country. Ziarat Biden. Biden's visit is aimed at putting more pressure on the Iraqi government to guarantee the immunity for the so-called remaining U.S. trainers in Iraq. People blame Washington for the political difficulties their country has been going through. This protest is showing the opposition of the Iraqi people to the presence of the U.S. troops and the intervention of the U.S. administration in their country's internal affairs. Most Iraqis are frustrated at Biden's visit to Iraq and say that he is seeking to divide Iraq by any means to complete his project in the region. Joe Biden's visit to Iraq is not welcome. He came to Iraq to seek extension for the U.S. troops' presence to extend the tragedy of the Iraqi people who have been living in dire conditions since 2003. Anti-U.S. sentiments run high in the country. U.S. forces have left behind a trial of death and destruction, and according to Iraq body count, the civilian deaths have exceeded 15,000 since the U.S.-led invasion of the country in 2003.
The Iraqi people have urged the Iraqi government not to extend the presence of U.S. troops in the country, stressing that the visit of Biden is not welcome. Hussam al Press TV, Baghdad. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton arrives in Myanmar on a visit that could mark the return of the resource-rich Asian nation to the world stage after more than 50 years of political isolation. She is greeted by the foreign minister of the new military-backed civilian administration. During her three-day visit, Clinton will meet the president as well as pro-democracy leader Aung San Suu Kyi, who spent 15 years in detention after leading a popular uprising that was crushed by the military. The military junta nominally handed power to civilian officials following elections last November. U.S. President Barack Obama has said he sees flickers of progress in the country. Nick Rowland, Reuters. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, November 30th, 2011, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, that's www.ggnonline.com. Also, you can uh, visit me on YouTube, ddargo2012, and on Facebook, Global Government News has a group, um, 129 members so far. Um, the link for that, um, along with all the other headlines, links, will be in YouTube's video description. Thank you for joining me if you're a first-time listener. Okay, so you just saw, um, uh, just kind of uh, uh, going off part one, uh, the first part of this news bulletin today, uh, just the, like I said, the new world order, uh, just sweeping through the new economic order, sweeping the homeless and the poor and the struggling aside. And uh, you can see uh, changing of the guards and, and lines being drawn and stuff like that. You had Clinton going in there after 50 years. And um, watch this. So here we go. PLA researcher says U.S. aims to encircle China. And this is the second time I've heard that uh, encircling China before. That uh, term, that phrase, the United States uh, Corporation clearly wants to encircle the Chinese Corporation. A prominent Chinese military commentator said on Monday in some of the bluntest criticisms of President Harrison, Boudou, uh, Brunel, whatever, recent diplomatic push in the Asian Pacific region or trading bloc. This is, of course, what? After Obama told the Asian Pacific leaders that the United States Corporation was, quote, here to stay. So, and um, what? He sent uh, a bunch of Marines to northern Australia. So, the United States is making much of its return to Asia, has been positioning pieces and forces on Chinese uh, periphery, and the intent is very clear. This is aimed at China to contain China, Liu wrote in the commentary, which quickly spread across the Chinese internet. Next up, digging into China's nuclear tunnels. So this is what everybody, all the sheeple are seeing on Yahoo News right now, right? Uh, the secret tunnels, the Chinese have called it their underground Great Wall, vast network of tunnels designed to hide their country's increasingly sophisticated missile and nuclear arsenal. So um, let's not even go into the, all the underground bases that uh, the United States and the West has, just a, a, a whole bunch under the, uh, uh, the United States and that, just bunches of tunnels. But uh, let's look at this because, uh, uh, you know, this is the thing. This is um, the, the elites right now are getting the Americans anti-Muslims, anti-Middle East, anti-Chinese. Um, this is all propaganda, getting them ready for the big, for the big show, right? Um, where you're going to have stage alien invasions and World War III. And, but uh, either way, we have China military denounces U.S.-Australia defense upgrade, as said on uh, Wednesday, uh, for upgrading military ties, ties and warning that such moves could erode trust and fan Cold War era antagonism. Isn't that funny, too, in Russia? Uh, Obama used that phrase, the reset button, and everybody else interpreted it differently, but I interpreted it uh, exactly the way it was intended to be, uh, or actually it wasn't intended to be, which was what? That they're actually resetting the Cold War. <laughs> so when he said the reset button, people thought, oh, okay, it's over, friendly relations with Russia. No, he's, they're going to start it up again. Australia, and it's all baloney anyways, Australia, China hold joint ac uh, rescue exercises. So uh, Australia, Australia and China, China just goes in there and says, okay, well, we're going to hold our own exercises. Check this out. I don't have enough time to get through all the uh, tectonic shifts ahead on the upcoming geostrategic realignments. Remember, I covered this in a video with a Corbett report about the SCO, and I've mentioned this before about the battleground for World War III could possibly take place in Central Asia. I've been saying this for two years now and it's called the Eurasian mainland or Brzezinski calls it the grand chessboard uh, or the Asian Balkans so 
Go in there and uh, check that out. Recent geostrategic moves by Anglo-American globalists in Central Asia are a part of a desperate attempt to preserve their global hege uh, hegemony uh, just before the emergence of a multipolar world. So, in Orwell's terms, Oceania versus Eurasia. There you go. Okay, moving on here. Uh, general, worst U.S. image in Pakistan ever. So it goes in there and it says that Army General Martin Dempsey uh, said um, to British media today. And like I said, I think it was done on purpose to get the people, like you said, they're not now, at all this time, the Pakistani people hated their government, their puppet regime. Now they're going back to the actual enemy, their own regime that's sold them down the river. And this is all part of the plan. Things are moving swiftly in Pakistan. It says here, BBC feeds of Pakistan have been terminated. BBC aired a documentary linking the Pakistan leadership with the Taliban. Next up, after uh, Pakistan and the ISI, Pakistani's intelligence, um, you had... Um, Mr. Gall, a general, ex-general in the uh, ISI in Pakistan, saying that they're actually behind some of the India's bombings. So, after Pakistan closes U.S. supply routes to Pac uh, Afghanistan, Russia warns about the northern route too. Moving on here, Pakistan heightened fear CIA black knight out to fuel secretary in strife in the area. So they are going out there trying to get things all stirred up. UN report on Syria based on witness accounts outside of Syria. Humanitarian concerns dress up the military conquest of Syria says here as victims witnesses and defectors interviewed outside of Syria is not evident but rather more of hearsay by groups of people with a vested interest in painting the Syrian government in the worst light possible all these countries were what they were on the um, the agenda the project for a new American century that's why they referred to it in that video as the project Biden's project US sends uh, terrorists to fight Syria government so US reported released hundreds of terrorists from its prisons in Iraq on condition that they leave the country for Syria and fight against the government of President Assad Dara's clashes claim seven Syrian troops you saw them f uh, shooting at people well they're getting shot at as well so they're not going to tell you that in the Western media US used nukes on Iraq and Afghanistan uh, used tactical nuclear weapons in his military campaign against Iraq, Afghanistan, and Middle East expert tells Press TV. Next up, Iran sanctions first step to war, says Ron Paul. EU split on Iran oil embargoes, so the EU is split on whether to press ahead with Iranian oil import, uh, embargoes. That's because, well, it's going to hurt them. A second Iranian nuclear facility has exploded as tensions rise. And uh, is this all just a charade? I don't know. But the last one was reportedly done by Israel. Uh, I'm not saying I'm anti-Israel. I got to put it out there just saying that um, I, that's what it was reported as that the explosion wasn't an accident it was sabotage former Mossad chief Israeli strike on Iran will lead to regional war three European states recall envoys as Germany and France and the Netherlands along with Britain uh, I, I also think that that was actually staged no takeover at UK embassy in Tehran says the Iranian officials and it could have all just been a show it could have been done by students they could have been forced or paid to do that or uh, it never happened at all. Hey, all Iranian diplomats to leave UK within 48 hours. So see, this could have not even have happened, and now they're just going to export and expel these uh, Iranian diplomats. Uh, Ukrainian pensioners, remember I talked about, they're ready to start uh, uh, shedding blood here, attack the governor's office. Ukrainian pres may sack government. Next up, military three rockets from Lebanon strike Israel. Uh, Stuart Swirlow is just ahead of the news bulletin recently, uh, yesterday in fact, and he said Lebanon and Jordan may be in the news in the next week so pay attention to that Egyptians await poll results Islamists see gains so just like in Libya with Sharia law Egypt imports 21 tons of tear gas from its US uh, from the US and port staff refuses to sign for it. so good for them Islamist party leader named Morocco's new prime minister so again Islamist party in Morocco all part of the agenda uh, it says here acid sprayed over Afghan family and marriage row this is all over the news Swerdlow covered that as well about uh, uh, anti-Muslim um, uh, propaganda so beware of that Gaddafi's daughter calls for Libya overthrow that's right urged Libyans on Tuesday to overthrow their new rulers possibly violating the terms of her exile in Algeria and the last story I have for this video is British soldier 21 due to become a father in two months is shot dead during a uh, training exercise in Kenya now this is a sad and unfortunate story for the soldier and his family and I'm sorry to hear about that um, but he is training the Kenyans and the Ethiopians to go in there and kill Somalians uh, uh, people uh, basically they're not even a sovereign anything they just want to be sovereign individuals or groups 
and they're stuck in the middle of this uh, of this uh, I don't even know what you want to call it it's a nightmare right now but he's like he's there just like the CIA uh, uh, with the drones and that and thank God they didn't kill anybody today thank you